Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to model a physics feeder, which is a type of component that can create new components during a simulation. In this case, we're going to be making new components that are affected by the physics in the 3D world. To get started, go ahead and clear the 3D world of all components, then go to the Modeling tab, and let's create a new component. So in the Component group, I'll click New. I'll then go to the Component Properties panel, and I'm going to rename that new component to be Physics feeder. Let's now add some geometry to the component. So go to the geometry group, click the feature zero, and then click box to add a new block feature. Let's now edit the dimensions of the block. So in the feature properties panel, let's set length to be 500, width to be 500, and the height to be 700. Let's also change the material. So I'll click the material drop down menu here. And let's use a transparent orange material. So just find that option here. And let's also add a collider to our block. So I'll expand the physics section here and set collider to be box. Notice when I set the collider for the feature in the output panel, notice that it added a new physics entity behavior to that node. So if I go to the component graph panel and expand the node tree of the component, and see it now has a physics entity behavior. Now, whenever you're modeling a feeder or a conveyor, you want to make sure your physics entity is set to kinematic. So I'll select the physics entity behavior here. I'll go to the properties panel and notice right now physics type is set to in physics so this is fine if you want things to kind of collide and you know bounce off or hit other components but if you're just concerned with moving the components in a certain direction set it to be kinematic let's now add the frame features to the component where we want to create new components and maybe transfer them onto a path so I'll go to the jump group here click the feature zero and then click frame Notice there's a new frame, and if you can't see the label of the frame feature in the 3D world, just go to the 3D world toolbar here, click frame types, and then select this checkbox here called frames. So I have the label selected here, and the move tool is active, so I'm going to drag the origin of the frame feature to the top face center of the block. And we want to make sure the orientation of the frame is good, so you want the x-axis pointing in that direction and the z-axis pointing up, so that's fine. Let's add another frame feature. Let's move it to this edge point here, this midpoint. So I'll just drag the frame to that edge, but we can see that its orientation is not good. So let's go to the Feature Properties panel, and let's reset that Rotate Y value to zero. And we can see in the 3D world that those smaller coordinate axes show the object coordinate system or the frame coordinate system, so that orientation looks good too. Let's now add a component creator. Go to the Behavior group and click to Behavior Zero. And under Material Flow, click component creator and let's now add a path so when the creator makes a new component we can transfer that component to that path so it can move along in this direction I'll go to the behavior group click the behavior zero and under material flow I'm going to add a one-way path let's now define the path or the points of the path which in this case is starts at frame and ends at this point here let's go to the properties panel and click the path expand button followed by the plus sign and add the frames in order so this frame will be the start of the path and then this will be the next point or the end of the path so let's close that out and now we want to transfer any new component made by the creator into this path at its start so at this location here so in the component graph panel expand component creator and the one-way path and you can see they have ports for transferring components in and out of one another let's use the output port of the component creator so when it makes a new component it's going to go out of this port here Let's go to the Properties panel and set the connection to this port to be the one-way path and the port to be input so that new component will be transferred into the start of the path. And last but not least, we want to make sure we can connect our feeder to other components. So if we want to transfer a created component onto a path of another component, we need to have an interface set up. So let's actually position the interface at the end of our one-way path here at frame 1. Let's go to the Behavior group, click Behaviors and then click one-to-one. -one. So this is going to add a one-to-one -one interface. Let's now go to the Properties panel and click Add New Section to create a new plug. And we want to position that plug at our end of our path, which is at frame underscore one. Let's now add a new field. In this case, we're transferring components in and out of containers. So we're going to add a flow field. And the container is going to be our one-way path, not the creator. And the component is going to be leaving the path to go on to another component, so we're going to add the port name to be the output of the path, so at the end of it. 
Let's now save our work. So it goes to the component graph panel. Click the root node of the component. And in the component group, I'll click Save. And then in the Save Component as Task Pane, I'll click this button here called Save. And you can save the component in your My Models folder if you want to, or any folder you want to. This is just an easy way to reference that the component is created, and you can check it in the eCatalog panel too. So I'm gonna click Save. And now I'll go to the Home tab. And in my eCatalog panel, I'll click My Models. And yep, there's the new feeder I just created. Let's now make a component that the feeder can create, and we want that component to be affected by physics in the 3D world. So in the eCatalog panel, under Models by Type, I'll click Basic Shapes. And let's add this item here called Cylinder. So I'll just drag it into my layout. And if I go to the Component Properties panel, you can see it does not have a physics entity behavior. So this component right now is not being affected by physics. This feeder can still create this component, but that's not why we modeled this component to begin with. So to make the cylinder a physical object, let's go to the Modeling tab. And in the Behavior group, click the Behavior zero. And then under Physics, click Entity. So this will add a physics entity to the cylinder. And notice its physics type is in physics. And it's positioned in the root node of the component. Let's now save this component as a new version of itself. So I'll select the root node of the component. I'll go to the component group and click Save As. And in the basic info, in the Save Component Task pane, let's actually change the name to be Physics Cylinder Geo. I'll then click this button here called Save As. And I'm going to save the component in my My Models folder again. So I'll just change the file name to be Physics Cylinder Geo. And there we go. Let's now go back to our Home tab and check our eCatalog panel to make sure that component is there. So I'll click My Models, and there's our physics part. Great. Now we no longer need this component in the 3D world, so I'll just select it again and then click the Delete command here. Let's now select our feeder. And in the Component Properties panel, notice it has a tab called Component Creator. So this lists some properties in that behavior. We have the interval property. This defines how often a part or a component is made during a simulation. We have the limit property. This defines how many components the creator can make during a simulation. And we have the part or the template that is used to create new components. So we have to find the file of the component or pass the component's VCID to the part property. Let's use the ellipsis button here to browse the component file, which in this case is going to be our physics cylinder. So I'll select it here and then click Open. And let's now run the simulation. You can see, yep, it created the parts. So if I select the cylinder, go to the Component Properties panel, notice, yep, there's that physics entity behavior. And its physics type is right now set to kinematic, so it's just concerned with moving in kind of a direction. Let's now reset the simulation and select the feeder. And notice we have an interface there, so let's test that with a conveyor that has a physics path. I'll go to the eCatalog panel and under Models by Type, I'll click Physics and I'll add this item here called Conveyor Physics. So let's drag it into our layout. Notice the PMP command is active, so if I move the conveyor closer to our feeder, we get that green arrow so they can connect, move it close enough, they snap together, and we get the green arrow. So, so far, so good. Let's now test. We want to see that cylinder transfer onto our physics conveyor. So I'll press Start, and yes, sir, they transfer on, and the parts actually should fall down to the floor. And they do. Great. Let's see if we can create a mess here. So, yep, they all fall again. And let's actually apply a pushing force with our mouse pointer. So, once we get enough there, let's go pow! <laughs> all right. Awesome. Let's go ahead and stop the simulation. And before I end the video, I just want to quickly cover why I used a one-way path in the feeder, not a physics path. So, let's reset the simulation. And let's actually unplug this physics conveyor. I'll go to the eCatalog panel. Under Models by Type, I'll expand conveyors and click Visual Components. And I'll add this item here called Conveyor. So this is just a simple conveyor that does not have a physics path. And notice when I move it close to the feeder, I get the green arrow. Oh ho! So I can connect this conveyor to the feeder. And if I run the simulation, see what happens. Everything still works. So let's actually stop right here. So by using a one-way path that is a type of static container, not a physics path, I'm able to connect my feeder to a component that is not affected by physics in the 3D world, or a component that is affected by the physics. So notice it still works with this normal conveyor, and it also works with this conveyor that's modeled for physics. 
But one thing to remember is that right now if I select one of these dynamic components, its physics type is kinematic. So when it reaches the end of this path here, you know, it's, it's no longer connected to anything or attached to something in the 3D world. So notice what happens. It disappears. That's because, you know, this component is no longer being used. It's just recognized as a basic component, so it's kind of trashed or deleted from the layout. So if you don't want it to happen, you can just connect your feeder to this physics conveyor. So I'll show you again. Let's unplug the normal conveyor. And what we expect to see is now the blocks, these cylinders, sorry, these cylinders, will remain in our layout. It'll just fall to the floor. So that's the difference between using a conveyor modeled for physics and a conveyor that's not modeled for physics. So you can still connect your feeder to those types of components, just that in one case the components will disappear eventually unless they're set to be in physics or they can just remain here and pile up. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any questions, you can go to our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.